from Screen Junkie Studios in the heart of Los Angeles, this is Screen Junkies Movie Fight. Now your host, Andy Signore. Whoa, hello everybody, welcome to Movie Fights. I'm so excited for today's battle. We got three amazing people here to fight some amazing topics, including what director most owes an apology for a film they made, uh, what supporting character deserves their own spin-off movie, and we'll be casting Justice League Dark, the movie, along with so much other stuff, so let's get to it. Um, if you'd like to join the conversation, though, if you're watching live on SJ+, Plus, which we do Thursdays ahead of the YouTube schedule, uh, you can do it by doing hashtag Movie Fights Live. Dan Merle on the couch is policing your oh, wow. tweets. I'm over here. That's so weird. I'm used to being right there. Hi. Hey. Hey. How are you? You're uh, you're on the cam, uh, following all the tweets at Movie Fights Live, and this is gonna be a fun fight, huh, Dan? Very fun fight. I am the tweet police. Tweet police, and he's also our fact checker to fact check these three fighters. Let's introduce them. First up, he's written comic books such as Wonder Woman '77 and The Illegitimates. Mark and Draco, welcome back. Good to be here, sir. I, I thought we were doing high five. I was like, cool. I'll do it. Awkward white guy stuff. We we got so well. <laughs> we, we got off together so well. We got off. <laughs> 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 we got well. We You're were not supposed to remember that. That's what the roof well, we were, were drunk. We were drunk. I was saying we got. So, it was so uh, a, a hand we connected a hand. so well <laughs> off together, uh, off the drunk fight. Uh, we got to see nice, kind Mark. <laughs> Who's going to be here? Mean Mark or nice Mark? Depends on how good these guys are. <laughs> oh. I'll probably be nice. Okay. We've, we've buttered them up now that we've, we've liquored them up last round. That's my favorite thing he said so far. A hand is a hand. <laughs> uh, next to him, he's back. Uh, he's the co-host of Superhero News and the Nick Animation Podcast. Congrats. Thank you. Welcome good. back, Hector Navarro. Yay. And our host of Knocking Dead. Are you excited we're going to get Knocking Dead back? Heck yes. Y'all been watching Fear the Walking Dead? Not no. great. It's not no, great. I haven't been watching. It's not great. I, I watch one Walking Dead show. It's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but next to you, wow, this has been awesome. You, Hector, you actually helped hook this up. No, yeah. not even. I mean, you yes, did. I did. Yes, I <laughs> you did. did. You were uh, at our Hall H uh, um, interviewing all That's the Marvel crazy. stars. It's Wasn't that crazy? That was crazy. And then this mister here, you know him. He was Zero in Grand Budapest Hotel. I loved him in Dope. He's in the upcoming Spider-Man. It's Tony Revolori. <laughs> Hello. But you actually were a fan. You saw yeah. it. when you heard Screen Jack, you're just like, oh, yeah, I love you guys. I know, I do. I, I watch all of YouTube because I have no life, really. <laughs> um, so, or the best life. Yeah, or the best life. When you have an hour to kill, you <laughs> always go movie fights. <laughs> yes. Why do homework when you can do this instead? <laughs> Amen, brother. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, I love it. So, yeah, you watch a show, you know what you're in for. I, I love that you came and did this yeah. hot off the set of Homecoming. Right? This I is mean, legit. I, I hope I, I hope I can keep up. No pressure. All right. So, well, welcome. Uh, you know how it works. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's watched. Uh, last before we start, I want to make sure I also call out on our fan cam today, Brett Pendleton. Welcome, Brett. Hello. You're here for a good fight, man. I feel like. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Brett, I might call to you to help me throughout the show, so pay attention to the arguments, uh, and you at home. I'm, I'm always right, Brett. Vote for me. You at home, if you're watching live, we'll have some Twitter polls, which Dan will react to as well, so uh, pay attention there. Um, if you want to be on the fan cam, by the way, go to sj.plus slash fan cam. Uh, that's how people always ask, how's it happen? That's how it happens. It's just a little bit of a luck. Uh, also, I want to plug something really quick. I don't think we have it there. Um, there's a secret event if you're in the Los Angeles area. We are taping it on Tuesday, correct, guys? Tuesday the thirtieth. Yes. Um, yes. I'm, I'm doing. I'm going off. I'm going rogue. I'm going off because I want to make sure we, this guys. This is going to be really funny, and I cannot wait to tell you more about what it actually is. But go to sj.plus slash secret event. I don't know if he's going to be able to get that in time. Sj.plus slash secret event. If you are in the Los Angeles area and you're available Tuesday for a taping, Mark and Draco knows what I'm talking about. Yes, they I, need to come and see this. I, yes. I actually I vague booked and I hate that I said this Tuesday. I'm doing something so cool, but you wouldn't believe me if I told you what it was anyway, so just wait till you find out. It's, it's a live event. Stop. We want to keep it a little surprise because we want the audience to come and little, learn a little bit more it's, about it. But I will say this. If you're a fan of Marvel or if you're a fan of Walking Dead, I'm telling you, and you like comedy, and you're, you like a little bit of a blue or, or, comedy. Or if you don't like either one of them. Or if you don't like either <laughs> one of them, you will want to come to this event in Los Angeles. I'm just telling you, because we want a crowd to come. Yes. We're going to enjoy this and actually help us, because uh, I promise once we release this, it'll be a lot of fun. We've been we've been prepping this one. Secret missions, always. Yeah, book, fill out your form or whatever now, because once yes. it's announced, it's going to fill it's out. It's so funny. Like so that. anyway, again, you sj.plus, such secret event. There it is. Uh, if you're in the Los Angeles area, make sure you sign up there quickly. We're going to follow up with you, and if you can fill out some time on Tuesday to to come watch a really funny live event. Please come do it. You will not be sorry. Uh, all right, we ready to fight? Yes. Let's do sure. it. Let's do it. Now let's do this. This is where we fight. 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 All right. Round one. 
This one came in from Less Than Poppy on Twitter. Uh, William Sh Shatner ha has sort of apologized for Star Trek V The Final Frontier. Um, he came out and said, you know, he actually admitted some stuff about it. It wasn't actually a full on apology, though, right? Well, Dan? no, uh, that's not something that William Shatner does. Right. But it, he. <laughs> He acknowledged that yes, there were some subpar elements. Uh, he blamed like, Trek. oh, we didn't have a budget. We didn't have a budget. Yeah. And all this stuff. Or a not director. the biggest problems with Star Trek V. But uh, yes, he he did <laughs> publicly acknowledge that this was not an optimal movie going experience. Yes, which so, as a Star Trek fan, I wholeheartedly agree with. Uh, so Brian on Twitter uh, asked <laughs> us, "What director most owes a personal apology for making a bad movie?" Great question. Uh, so Mark, we're going to start with you. What? director out there most owes giving us an apology for a film they made. There were a bunch to choose from, but ultimately it came <laughs> down to what did this bad movie do? Did this spawn generations of bad movies or cause a horrible trend? And we've already seen it. This movie would be a movie called Jurassic World by Colin Trevorrow. Um, I don't even know where to begin with how bad that movie was. That movie is nostalgia porn in its worst form. I believe most people went to see that movie because they remembered when I was in college, I watched the movie. Now I'm going to watch my kid watch it and it's going to be just like the original Jurassic Park. But they didn't actually watch the movie. It is lifeless. It's inert. The perf it's horribly cast. The special effects look like chronologically it's the first Jurassic Park movie. The, 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 you watch the original Jurassic Park or even part two and part three. They at least have one or two classic scenes in them. You can refer to like the river scene in part three or the hanging over the cliff scene in part two, both of which aren't great movies. This movie is just lifeless. This movie just, it, it, I would rather get my teeth cleaned for three days than see this movie ever again. theres It's all bad rear projection and bad CG and bad science. It's just the laziest form of filmmaking and it made billions of dollars. So it's going to cause a trend of really bad nostalgia porn. People are going to make things based on things they remembered liking as kids and the content's not going to matter. Hopefully Stranger Things will kind of correct that course, because that's nostalgia porn done really, really well. Mm -hmm. But Jurassic World, easily the worst movie in the series, and one of the worst studio films I think I've ever seen. Hector, what are you picking? Ooh, um, that was a great response, great response. Uh, I, to go off of what uh, Mark just said, a movie that like, maybe, what was the legacy of it, like, and, and, and kind of what it did. And I'm going to pick 2011's Green Lantern, directed by Martin Campbell, who directed some of the best James Bond movies. Martin Campbell is a fantastic director, a British guy who did Goldeneye as well as Casino Royale. And you can see the love that he had for James Bond and the importance of that franchise in those films. When they got him to do Green Lantern, this was originally going to be the beginning of the DC Comics Marvel, or like the DC Comics uh, film universe, the extended universe, the cinematic universe, whatever you want to call it. And they were going to branch off from this and then do a new Wonder Woman, a new Superman, a new Batman and then Justice League and then go from there. And the movie was so bad that Warner Brothers recognized that they could not do it. And because of that, that ripple effect, and this was in 2011, this was even after Harry Potter was done. Only reason Warner Brothers is finally now getting to the other superhero characters other than Batman and Superman, the movies they know how to make, because they've made those movies before, is because Harry Potter's over. In the midst of Harry Potter mania, people would ask Warner Brothers, why aren't you doing more uh, DC, like Wonder Woman and The Flash and Green Lantern and all these other characters and Aquaman and Martian, and they say, oh, we're, we're fine, we're making all of our money with Harry Potter, which is one of the reasons I will always love Harry Potter, but still be like, mm, Harry, you really kind of screwed us over as comic book fans, because we had to wait. Here was our first shot. Here was a film that cast Angela Bassett as as Amanda Waller and killed her off. And Amanda Waller's supposed to be the connective tissue between different kind of superhero characters and realms and everything. So all of this stuff that they didn't recognize, but the reason I want a personal apology for Martin Campbell was because you could tell that he did not give an ass about Green Lantern as a whole. He looks so bored every time he talks about this film. He looks like it's just a paycheck, obviously. Uh, the only time I remember a little spark of anything coming from Martin Campbell is I was at the Comic-Con panel the year before the movie came out, and a fan asked the director, who's your favorite Green Lantern? He's all these characters to choose from, and he went, bzzzt, my favorite is bzzzt which is just a very obscure like oh that's the one green lantern that he learned it's this little insect that's called bzzz, and isn't that funny that he knows it fat that factoid isn't that great he could have said Kilowog or Salak or John Stewart or Guy Gardner or the character that's a character and instead he went for the sort of easy like that's the one factoid I remembered about this thing and just it was so bored by it and I would love it if he just like Joel Schumacher I mean I wouldn't love it I don't really care but Joel Schumacher has gone back and been like oh yeah we almost destroyed like superhero movies with our Batman and Robin because we thought it was a cartoon it was a certain thing <laughs> We had no idea, like, we almost killed it. If Martin Campbell would come on and say, yeah, I really screwed the pooch on me not giving a crap about Hal Jordan or the story wasn't ambitious enough, and it really just put a halt on any sort of plans that maybe Warner Brothers had to do bigger and better stuff. 
All right, Tony, what are you picking? I'm picking uh, M. Night Shyamalan, uh, The Last Airbender. <laughs> I think that film is 1,000% the worst film in the history of filmmaking. <laughs> I think it is so bad. The CGI is terrible. Um, there's nothing good about it. There's not a spark. There's nothing. There's You can't even say you like the film at all. <laughs> it's just terrible. You know, um, and I think he needs to apologize for all the terrible things he did, destroying the source material as well as casting it kind of racist. You know, making these these you know characters who who traditionally were something else just something and subjugating them in in, in terrible roles. And just the casting was absolutely terrible. There was nothing good about the movie. All right, guys, fight it out. We got deep nerdy really quick. Yeah, this is like yeah. suddenly three, like, uh, like three. Go ahead, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. So let's hear it out. Um, I think these are three equally <laughs> miserable films. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything in any of them that's remotely memorable. Yeah. I think of all these three films, going back to the speed round thing of if these three were in a dollar bin, which one would I buy if I had yeah. to buy one? And I think the one I would buy if I had to buy one would probably be Green Lantern, just because right. some I'm, of the just because yeah. some of the production design is okay, and it was at least ambitious. It's it, it's sort of bland and flat. Somewhat funny with Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think so. Um, but, uh, but, and for me, Avatar The Last Airbender is awful, but thankfully we still have the cartoon. So you can right. go watch the cartoon and purge that from your brain. Yeah. I think he's got a lot more to apologize for than just that movie. I think everything since The Sixth Sense he needs to apologize the for. The Happening. The Happening Lady where the, the grass water. is going to kill what? you. Yeah. Signs where they're Amish. Woo, Listen, spoiler signs alert. Signs is good. I like no, signs. No, I the, like them. Signs are not Amish. It's the it, village. It's I was the about village to say, I was like, <laughs> signs are, But signs, they're aliens that are allergic I to like, water yeah, and they come I to like a planet them. that's 80% mm-hmm. water. Mm-hmm. What? It makes sense. I just, I just think that Jurassic World takes such a great film. It was one of the last big adventure films Steven Spielberg made that felt like it was yeah. worthy to be up there with E.T. and Jaws. Yeah, definitely. And just diminishing returns. And the movie's just so uninspired and so flaccid. And even the Inherent logic is so bad. They keep the T Rex by the food court. What? Mm-hmm. It, she runs around in white linen suits to the jungle and, and heels. And, heels. Yeah. and the kids, the big issue is my parents are getting divorced. Is this 1974? Mm-hmm. Really? And the dinosaurs are stupid. And because Chris, <laughs> and Chris Pratt is a Navy SEAL in the movie, right? Right. That doesn't mean he's good with animals. That's not what the SEAL part of that means. It means but apparently catch, the he, screenwriter thought that's what it, it meant. It means he can catch a fly in midair. That's what uh, it means to be a Navy SEAL. Uh, I just I just think <laughs> of all three thing? of these movies. Yeah. I think Jurassic World is the is the the most depressing of them I, all. I I tried to figure out how to no. compare these three and be and be like which one's the best and what and I could I couldn't do which it at the movie level. Which cancer is worse? I couldn't which, do it at right. the movie level. If it were up to me, I would probably buy Jurassic World in the dollar bin. If it were up to me, because these two were way more disappointing for me. But I think what it came down to for me was the director themselves and like their attitude about the movie and their sort of passion going into it. And for better or worse, M Night Shyamalan he did like the cartoon. He made the movie because the, his kids love the cartoon. And he was like, this would make a great movie. And so for me, he tried and failed in every respect, but like he tried. Do you know what I mean? And then for for Colin Trevorrow, the dude had no time. He had no time. And so it's a terrible script and they went. And so for Colin, I think, and I'm really hoping this, I'm just maybe I'm just being optimistic because he's doing Star Wars Episode Nine, but I'm hoping that Colin, I mean, I thought it was well directed in my opinion, but the script was so bad that I, I think the guy obviously loves Jurassic Park. You can see it because it is nostalgia porn. He obviously loves Spielberg and he loves that whole world, but although the misfires, I blame on a, a shabby script and, and things that they could have spent another six months just figuring out before they started shooting. So for me, Martin Campbell is the most offensive because the guy could not give less of a crap about Green Lantern and to a lot of people it's important. He made a movie that was so generic and bland and lifeless that when I would tell people I was so bummed out by it they would go it was fine for what it is I'm like this isn't G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra this is a guy Hal Jordan this is right after The Dark Knight came out and before The Dark Knight Rises in the middle of Christopher Nolan's trilogy that I would have to tell people but how's friends with Bruce Wayne these guys live in the same world does that make sense that look at how much care and love and passion is put into The Dark Knight trilogy and how much Christopher Nolan's allowed to do what he does as an artist and Warner Brothers is letting him and everybody's on board with Batman Green Lantern over here could be just as great of equal of a character as interesting should be as respected and Martin Campbell pooped on it. Tony? <clears throat> so what you have... <laughs> first off, yours is nostalgia porn, but it did give us things, like you said, Stranger Things, which is beautiful and amazing. Also, it is a successful movie. It made so much money. How can you apologize for making a successful movie? Cigarettes which, make which, a lot of money, too. <laughs> exactly. And people love them. 
but, and, 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 and they're, they're still toxic. making money. But the, the they're Vince absolutely terrible. I'm not saying the movie's not terrible, but yeah. regardless, he's gotten to direct now Star Wars 9. Oh, yeah. Episode 9, because he is somewhat of a good director, and no, he shouldn't no, he... apologize for that, because he made an amazing movie, <laughs> and he shouldn't have to, like, you know, be at fault for that. He may, And I think there are a lot of great things about that movie. I liked it, and kids like it as well. Yeah. There's a bunch of things that... Kids be... eat paste. <laughs> exactly, but doesn't matter. They take their parents to go see the movie, so regardless, kids didn't even like my movie, and they like paste. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, mine's is definitely worse, and, and like you said, M. Night Shyamalan definitely cared about the source material yeah. he cared about it and still fucked it up yeah <laughs> he still messed it up Failed, because yeah. he just he just couldn't do anything with it he wasn't smart about it there like the CGI was terrible with those rocks Ugh. floating at like two miles per hour Ugh. and as for Green, Green Lantern yeah I'm thankful that he did a terrible job because now that we're gonna get the 2020 2020 yeah. uh, uh, Green Lantern Corps. Yeah. Yeah. We know what not to do. He did everything wrong, so that way we know what not to do. Mm. So we're thankful to him because he's he gave us everything that's wrong. But with Jurassic World, there were three movies before it that he could have stolen, just lifted direct scenes from and mm. reshot them and made a passable movie. <laughs> Jurassic World doesn't work at all from the casting to the locations to the internal logic to the I'm, CG. I don't, I don't it, see that. Yeah. Na name a classic moment that you want to revisit from Jurassic World. Go. Oh my God. I want to I want to revisit when he teaches is the, the Raptors oh to stop. God. I want to see it. the running, even though it's terrible and corny and cheesy, but some of the scenes in, in Jurassic okay. Park were corny and, okay. and, and yeah. things so like that. So the moment, with the, the moment with you... The, with the, the, the dinosaur that opens the things and, and sprays the thing on that yeah. one guy. Yeah. But, but you're uh. talking about, the, you're talking about the, the classic moments in the first three Jurassic Park movies. The first one, almost all of them. The second one, yeah. the over-the-side scene, even the scene with Jeff, Blo Jeff Goldblum's gymnastic daughter and the stuff in San Diego <laughs> is kind of fun. Yeah. The third one, even with Taya Leone, there's still some great Great stuff in it. Hey, the fourth, now. the fourth <laughs> one, the this. fourth one, the, your favorite scene in the fourth one is Chris Pratt holding his hand up to a CG dinosaur. The favorite scene in the third one is the dinosaurs attacking a boat on a river. The scene in the second one is dinosaurs and people hanging off into a crevasse. So it's like diminishing returns. What's the fifth one going to be? Chris Pratt making tea? Oh, that'd be so awesome. Lasers and raptors, apparently. Uh, uh, final thoughts here, quickly. Um, uh, Colin Trevorrow, I think, is a good director. He was given Star Wars. The dude was passionate about Jurassic Park, and uh, Martin Campbell was so not passionate, and he also caused Warner Brothers to rethink their whole strategy because of how bad that movie was, that we got a a not a great uh, entry, Man of Steel, a really misfire Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, an all-over-the-place Suicide Squad. Imagine if Green Lantern was a great movie and they went from there, where we would be now. Mark, final thought? Yeah, I think I've said everything. <laughs> just, Tony, final thought? <laughs> they're they're um, all awful. You said that you you had the source, I had my source material to go back to and watch the mm -hmm. cartoons. You had Jurassic Park as yeah. well, so there's not much you can play there. <laughs> Green Lantern is absolutely a terrible movie, but yeah. I can, you can, the CGI hold up. There's still great moments in it. I like Ryan Reynolds, and I think Blake Lively was great, and, the, and they gave us them two together. <laughs> She's a great human being. So is my mom. And she shouldn't be in a Green Lantern movie either. <laughs> well, debatable. We'll see. Um, and my movie is is absolutely the worst. It, it did terrible. Nobody likes it, and I'm pretty sure it has the worst score on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Probably. Whoo! It should be right, just a three-way three tie I from know. misery. Dan, anything to add? Well, technically, uh, Hector's right in principle. Uh, Green Lantern actually opened a month before Harry Potter and the Death of Hallows Part 2. But it was sure. the same summer, so right. they were wrapping up Harry Potter at the same time that Green Lantern was coming They went, out. it's ending, we gotta get this DC thing going. Uh, the Village, uh, they haven't been confirmed as Amish, <laughs> just off the grid. So, uh, okay. they may he also overlooked Unbreakable, which a lot of people might have thought. Oh, that's a that miserable came movie, too. No, it's good. I think a lot of people would disagree <laughs> with you with that. Some some thoughts from Twitter. Uh, Spencer at Fast Dave suggested Joel Schumacher for Batman and Robin. He's already done it uh, and that's low he did fruit. Uh, that's at amazing. Tampa Buckman 88 uh, James Wong for Dragon Ball Evolution oh, uh, Holy man. Hotcakes Batman suggested Gavin Hood for Wolverine Origins and Jack Shipley uh, one of our fans said I seriously must be the only person on earth that was okay with The Last Airbender Yes. He is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yes. Um, we found him. He's like yeah. a unicorn. He is. He's like, that's like a unicorn. And of course, we put out the poll, Andy, which I will let you know the results of that when you make your decision. Oof. I think based on the argument, uh, I gotta go with Hector. Yeah. It was close. Yeah. I just heard uh, your argument swayed me of the fact that he just didn't care as much. Yeah. And then when you sort of admitted that, yeah, he cared, but he just didn't get it. Right. 
and and the fact the little pull, things you were pulling about what he said and didn't care about it and killing Amanda Waller and everything they did. Um, Does she die or just get slammed into the wall really hard? I mean, die. I think she anyway, dies. They, I'm not gonna rewatch the good, movie. Good, good check, argument there. So. It was close. It was it was really between Ooh. you two and you and Tony, and I was looking for a little bit more, but then you repeated yourself a little bit in the first yeah. easy oh. rookie mistake on a movie fights, but <laughs> really, really good first round for me. But I gotta go to Hector based on that. Dan, what did the poll say? The poll was a landslide. Seventy percent voted for M Night Shyamalan. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I was close, but I can't pick what I like. Martin Campbell picking up nineteen percent and Jurassic World with eleven percent. Uh, but I had your vote for that, right, Dan? No. Over oh, those two? Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is going to be a fun one. Round two. This Ooh. comes in from Twitter. Uh, True, um, Drew Tor uh, asked us, since obviously we just heard Warner Brothers is going forward with a Doug Lyman-directed Justice League oh. dark film. Are we are we okay with that? That's mine. I know, they're wrong. Oh, okay. Are we okay? Would we like this idea that Doug sure. Lyman's doing Justice I, League Dark? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad he left the gambit. Yeah. I really wanted to see Doug Lyman. I mean, Mark, Doug. you're a DC person. Your um, hat says it. It's it's a hat that fits my head and it was free. <laughs> don't don't take any. Don't, don't don't put subtext where there isn't any. Um, sure. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's cast it and see if we get more excited. Yes? <laughs> yes. Um, so here's the character, uh, Constantine, Swamp Thing, Dead Man, Santana, and uh, Air, Air, I don't even know Erdogan. Etrigan. Etrigan the, the Demon. Demon. Okay. Gosh, Andy. Uh, sorry. I know. Watch more cartoons. Where are your credentials? I know. <laughs> uh, so you have to cast those characters. Who are you going to cast as them? Uh, I have your list, I think. And I think we have some visual aids <gasps> that you can cue when Whoa. you're ready. We do have those. I hope we Adam do. made him. Oh, sweet. Adam right. made him. Are we starting of over course, here? Of course, Adam made him. Hector, you're up. Okay, I actually, for real, I got more excited about the prospects of this movie after, like, fan casting it. And even after seeing <laughs> your guys' casting, I was like, oh, this movie's going to be dope, actually. This is cool. All right, so here we go. For John Constantine. <laughs> do you want to queue it up first and see it through, or are you going to see it at the end? Do, uh, is it all one at a time, or is it probably all five shot. of them, right? It's, it's a group, group shot. shot. Uh, let's just see it right now. Boom! Hector's casting. Wow! There it is. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. This is horrifying. Oh, so, my gosh. So ILM is working with you yes, guys now, right? Definitely. <laughs> is that Conan O'Brien or, or Donald Trump as Etrig in the Deep? Okay, great. That's actually... <laughs> it's like the show Life. I yeah. watch that. It's the show Life. It is the show Life. <laughs> oh, my God. Me and my dad love the show Life. So I went, to the, show. I went to casting for uh, uh, John Constantine. I went a little bit older, a little bit edgy, but a phenomenal actor and a guy who I don't think has become a household name yet, Damian Lewis. We know him from Homeland. We know him from Life. We know him from Band of Brothers. The guy is 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 also really sexy, I think. He's really sexy and smooth, and Constantine's a guy that kind of gets around a little bit. So I love, love that. Then you went to Zatanna, who's right there next to him. Apparently, they're already trying to cast Latina for Zatanna to try to add some diversity. So I went with his co-star in life, Sarah Shahi. She's also in Person of Interest. She was in Fairly Legal. They've got great chemistry already. She has got a, a she's gorgeous, obviously, but just so funny, so sharp, perfect for Zatanna. Um, I'm gonna go up to Swamp Thing up here on the left. I went Forrest Whitaker. Swamp Thing. Well, I that's want. Who's in there, okay. That's who's in there. You can't <laughs> tell, but that's Forrest Whitaker. I want the voice. I want a great actor to play a uh, Alec Holland or whoever he is before. If he's somebody, if he's before. Uh, like a normal human guy and Forrest Whitaker just has this voice that is so it's very uh, grounding and relatable and human but it is also very like otherworldly you know to okay. hear his voice in that Star Wars Rogue One trailer what will you become it's you know I want that sort of All feeling right. for Swamp Thing I went uh, Dead Man I gotta go Casey Affleck let's keep the <laughs> Afflecks in the house okay Kay's brother's playing Batman <laughs> I want Casey to play uh, ba Boston Brand is the character's name and this would be like a comedic departure for Casey who, who's so good at the dramatic roles he was so good in Gone Baby Gone he looks in, amazing in Manchester by the Sea but Casey Affleck is you know Dead Man Boston Brand he's gonna be that humorist you know he, he jumps into people's bodies he's got the great Bostonian accent and obviously Casey can do it that's where he's from that's the guy lastly rounding it out Etrigan the Demon, I went Joel Edgerton. Mm. Joel Edgerton, fantastic. What a gift. Fantastic. Bruh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I'm trying to make a pun out of Attack of the Clones and I can't. Joel Edgerton is a great <laughs> British actor who I believe could come from a King Arthurian time as Jason Blood. You put a little white streak in his hair, get his hair red, and I think he could also do a great job in that sort of motion capture, whatever they do with Etrigan the Demon. Gone, gone, form of man, rise the demon Etrigan. Um, I think it'd be awesome. He's, he's so good in Midnight Special. We were talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. He really, really impressed me in that. I haven't seen him everything he's in, but great in Warrior, great in Zero Dark Thirty. That's my cast. I'm sticking to it. Tony, let's let it hear your cast. Sure. Um, I didn't write it down. Do you want to see it? Please. <laughs> there it is. There, there it, it is. is. <laughs> I'm casting as John Constantine Shia LaBeouf because he is 
John Constantine. <laughs> everyone hates him, but everyone loves him at the same time. You want to, like, there's something crazy about him, yet you're still constantly intrigued by him. Um, for Dead Man, I'm casting Moe's Death. Nice. Because I want him to, you know, when he comes into a different people's body, to add a little flavor into them. Yeah. And I think he's funny. I think he's great. And I think he could kill the, uh, uh, the role. For um, Etragon, I'm uh, the demon. I am casting Billy Zane. Because not only has he voiced the character before, but also oh. he... With, there's not enough Billy Zane in this in this in this world. I think he, <laughs> I think he's an amazing actor, and and I want him to be put in more things. And also, I think he's just got that same type of uh, facial feature, and I feel like he could kill this for Swamp Thing. I cast. Oh my God! Oh, Matthew McConaughey, <laughs> um, because I think he is that guy who's environmentalist, and I think he could bring something <laughs> to the role. And how uh, how can you not want him to be like rolling his his swamp thing over and over like Jim Carrey in that uh, uh, Lincoln Toyota uh, <laughs> yeah. SNL sketch? So I think that would be great. And for Zatanna, I'm going really young, and I went um, to the young girl from Stranger Things, Millie Bobby Brown, I think is her yeah. name. Yep. And I think she's fantastic in that show, and she 11, shows up. Yep. She's eleven, plays um, the character eleven, and I think she's great in that show. She shows us what she can do. She's a fantastic actress, as well as adding a young person to that dynamic group. It adds something a little bit different, and they can kind of be parenting her. And especially since you know you can add backstory to certain things, but I'll get into that later. Mm. All right, Mark, let's hear your pitch. Okay. All right. You got a visual aid. Boom. Wow. Yes. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, I picked uh, for Dead Man Doug Jones. Yeah, okay. Because uh, I, I went, I was thinking more of the uh, Kelly Jones Doug uh, Dead Man when he was basically a, a skeleton floating, yes. you know, in, on the other side. And Doug is a really great actor. He got to prove it in uh, Hellboy the Golden Army. And he's a great physical actor. He's been in all the Guillermo del Toro stuff. So we'll get the physicality and the ghostliness. Um, for Zatanna, I went with Emma Stone because Zatanna's character is originally a stage magician who finds out she has magical powers, mm -hmm. and Emma Stone's got that sort of innocent, sort of cheesecakey Vegas vibe to her. But also, uh, uh, or she's a really great actress behind that that can embrace. And she, I think, in this, in my version of the movie, is our entry level character. She's the most human of all those people. Uh, for John Constantine, I went with an actor we haven't seen in a while, Alex Pettifer, Ugh. who was in Magic Mike. <laughs> I agree. Oh, hear me out on this. Um, he's he hasn't worked in a long time because he was notoriously difficult, and and you know Channing Tatum basically said on the junkets he didn't like the kid. He has subsequently been apologizing and realizing you know how how he got ahead of himself. That's I think good. He, I think he's a good looking guy. He's got that roguish quality. He's British, and I think that this character <laughs> is plays to what people don't like about him. That 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 we kind of he's handsome, but he's kind mm. of a jerk, and that's kind of sums up Constantine. I think this could be a redemption role for him, the same way Iron Man was for. Robert Downey Jr. And for Swamp Thing, I went with John, John Cena. Uh, uh, because I went... Cena in there. Yeah, because I think that for me, I want my version of this movie is it's all practical effects. So with John Cena, he's got the body. You put him in that... You know, you put him in that suit and he's got... You know, you've got... All right. You know, and, with, and uh, who am I forgetting? Oh, the demon. The demon and Jason Blood. Uh, uh, Colin Farrell. I think because Colin mm. Farrell is is just a fantastic underrated actor. I think he's a really good character actor who, unfortunately, yep. is super handsome and gets, doesn't get enough credit. But if you saw The Lobster or you saw In Bruges, he's a really mm. great actor. So and he does in The Lobster just such great silent torment that is such a huge part of Etrigan. So that's why I went with those guys. Wow. Okay, guys. Is there a way to post the three photos? Uh, do we have? Can we send them to po social and see if they say? Do we well, know? So the poll is out. Okay. okay good. Yeah. All maybe right. just the names. Just because sometimes names. it's hard yeah. to see who's in Swamp right. Thing. Yeah. Uh, right. All right, guys. What do you think based on their those uh, castings? Was there one that stood out as completely wrong? Uh, <laughs> Alex Pitifer, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the guy who cast Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Oh, because <laughs> Shia LaBeouf is one trying to get that redemption, just like Alex Pitterfer, but he has been working, and he's much more, uh, uh, he's been he's been working constantly, and he's just a much better actor. Alex Pitterfer does the same thing in every role, ever. He he has one no face, he's the, the male Kristen Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, we're talking about the versatility of Shia LaBeouf. That was great, that was great. That was from, great from Holes to Transformers, the Shia yeah. LaBeouf story. Well, both, hey, well now he's doing Sia videos, yeah. and, and oh, a bunch oh, of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> call, the one, call Helen Mirren. She's yeah. mad. He stole the Sia video from her. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Well, here's it's the problem like with, with both of y'all's Constantines is I feel like they're both too young. 
Uh, although I think that Shia definitely has more of an edge than Alex Pitifer, who do, who is very handsome, but he doesn't. We've already have had that. an American Constantine once. Yeah. Also, yeah. that's another thing. And he Shia, got killed in it. He got yeah, killed Shia, in it. That's a, like that's a great homage to the yeah, original cause Constantine. Because that's you, what Warner Brothers wants to do. They Shia. want to reference that movie. Yeah. Hey, that movie, say what you will, is amazing. I like it a lot. Oh, I like the movie too, but they're not going to acknowledge that movie exists. I'm not saying that they're acknowledging, but it's a nice little homage. You don't I have don't, to acknowledge the movie exists, but it's a nice little nod with a little tip of the hat to say, "Oh, look, we ha- we casted the same guy." Mm-hmm. But here's the, here's the thing, though. My guy, Damian Lewis, he has been around the block. And for me, John Constantine is a guy that even though he's kind of human, you know, m- m- could be an entry point character like Zatanna, could be an entry point character, the guy has seen some stuff. He has been around the block for a really, really long time. Nothing phases him. And I for that, i got to go an actor that is in the same wheelhouse as a Ben Affleck or a Henry Cavill or a lot of those other great actors that are in the rest of the DC Extended Universe. I wouldn't go young on this. I wouldn't go super good looking. But Damian Lewis is like, he's got the, the looks and the charm, but also, like, you've definitely seen I think Damian Lewis is a really great actor. Really I think great, yes. I think he elevates everything he's in. He's he's easily the most watchable thing in Dreamcatcher, which yeah. is uh, just an ad- abortion of a film. But <laughs> the problem with Damian Lewis is I think he reads too sinister. I don't think there's I, I've, he's so Ooh. cold and there's such a darkness to him. Somebody needs and to I, watch life. And I think there NBC. needs to be a, there needs to be a little bit more humanity sure. in Damian Lewis. I think he's a really good actor, but he strikes me as just mm-hmm. is just so cold and so off putting that I, I I think his Constantine might be a little one dimensional. I would even think Shia is more human, brings more warmth to his roles than Damian Lewis does. That's not a slamming on his sure. ability. Sure. Well, sure. But you're saying give him a shot, but yeah. I'm like Alex Pettifer, you know, give him a shot. You know, we, Jack- We're all saying give our consultants yeah. a shot. But I'm just saying yours is, is first off, I forgot that you had who you had chosen. Ooh. Because like, I, I he couldn't... he hasn't yet. B- well, Sorry. that's the point. Can he sell a thing? Especially if you want to make him an entry-level character. Can he sell a, 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 a movie? Mm-hmm. That's I'm picking Shia for Constantine. I'm going straight through. Are you, you get the are first you point. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? No, I'm going through each one. I'm going through each okay, one. Okay, Swamp Thing. Here's a problem who's, with... Now, who's Ma- the best Swamp Thing? Here's a problem with McConaughey Swamp Thing. Way too Southern. Way too... And he'd for, smoke himself. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> for a guy that is supposed to be sort of this otherworldly, you know, breaches through dimensions. And 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 it's just not even human how, at how all. How can you say that? Because he's it, very grounded. McConaughey in human is extremely grounded. Exactly. And, and you've seen him in, in amazing things, Don't and he could it. do something amazing with that role. Even all right, though he's, all right, all right. I'm um, Swamp Thing. Listen, so we have McConaughey, we have Farce Whitaker, yeah. we have John Cena. John Cena. John, John Cena. Cena can't really do. John Cena. Like, really, like even if, with if you're gonna effects. put like someone who wants to be in that thing, you got to put someone who can actually act because he's gonna have to be emoting through these practical effects, which you want to do. Can John Cena do that? No, he's just muscles. It's basically like putting Lou Ferrigno through makeup again. He can't really act. Ouch. So wow. here's the other wow. thing about John Cena. I think that John Cena is definitely a graduate of the Rock School of Acting, and I'm fine with that. Like I love that for what those guys do. But Cena, even though Ouch. he's this massive guy, he still has this sort of like nice American roundness to him. The way he that he speaks, he's just, hey, I'm John Cena. Hey, you can't see me. Just this very kind of like sort of soft roundedness with his voice. That's why kids love him. He's an action figure. He's great. Like and and and. He, that's why he's such a face. He's such a great face. I think he has Absolutely. this roundedness to him. For for Forrest Whitaker to play uh, Swamp Thing, there is this. I mean, if you guys haven't seen The Last King of Scotland, Forrest Whitaker can get downright terrifying. He can he terrifying. can do amazing things. Yes. yes. Thank but, you for helping me with my point, Tony. But I think McConaughey is much better right now. He's he could do something, and he also is is a lot bigger. I feel, and I think he can do something. Say with motion <laughs> capture. Can I hear each of you do your Swamp Thing voice in character? Oh, absolutely. Start yeah. with Mark. No, don't start with me. <laughs> you got the actor. Start okay, with the go. real actor. Right, Hector, yeah. They start with me and then Forrest we'll go to the real actor. They call me the Swamp Thing. <laughs> that, would okay. be, that would be chills. That Tony. would be chills. <laughs> that would be chills. Okay. How's McConaughey okay. going to sound? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> McConaughey is going to sound like this. I'm the Swamp Thing. <laughs> wow, all right. Mark, no pressure. I'm Swamp Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm just saying, McConaughey can bring something strong to it, and in he would love, I've heard in an interview, he would love to work in motion capture, so oh, he's really? willing to okay. do this. Oh, so you're not going practical, you're going motion capture. I'm going motion sure, capture, sure, Andy sure. Circus type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so makes sense. I think that would be the I was best going thing. with Hector, but then Tony this read really sold me, so get Tony gets, gets Swamp Thing. All right, we got uh, Swamp Thing cast. Okay, I gotta get Dead Man. I love Doug All Jones. Right, Dead Man. I love Doug Jones, but Dead Man, you know, Doug Jones is good and he's got a great sense of humor, but, but Casey Affleck. 
playing that character, then basically a very similar character that he played in uh, in Goodwill Hunting. Just let him be the most was Bostonian. Was he dead in Goodwill Hunting? He was dead in Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> His name's Boston. He's not from Boston. He, yeah. <laughs> His brother's name is Cleveland. No, no. Casey okay, Affleck okay, versus, versus Doug Jones like, versus Mo's There's, there's been interpretations of him in animation where he has that sort of like, if, if it's not Bostonian, it's kind of New York, it's kind of Brooklyn, it's kind of in here. See, this then thing. you would cast someone and who actually can do it. Most Affleck Def. can do it. Affleck can do it. Uh, Affleck can do it. Casey Affleck can doesn't do want to do comedy, Casey, though. He hasn't done it. This isn't a comedy. Well, but the, it's a comedic role. The comedic role, and I role think he's that, saying. I think that Casey Affleck would be fantastic at it, and I think that he would love an opportunity to do Mark, that. Mark, thoughts? I just think Doug Jones gets the otherworldly part of it. The, the, the part of Dead Man, if they're doing a Justice League Dark that's a supernatural-based one, they're going to go more edgy and more scary. And he's proven that not only is he great yeah. physically, and we're gonna do, there's going to be a lot of mocap with this guy because he's a ghost that floats around, mm-hmm. but he's also a really good actor and has that very haunting voice mm-hmm. and, has, and has got a great... He's just a great physical presence and a great vocal presence. Yes. I think, I think if you're going to go CG design-wise, I think you go with Doug Jones because other than Andy Serkis, he's the mocap guy to go to. My interpretation of Dead Dead Man, real quick, is from like Kingdom Come, Alex Ross, art by Alex Ross, where he's a straight up skeleton, and he's everything you're saying is absolutely true visually. But when he starts to speak, it is very familiar. It's this kind of like you know he's either hey, he's either from Boston or from New York, or have gone to these voices, and he's telling people about his experience and how he died and how he does this and does this. But it's a very sort of grounded, recognizable voice, and that's what lends to the humor that that uh, that difference between this otherworldly thing and I the think, voice that you recognize. I think Mos Def is the best because he can bring something to my cast in general, just something. Something comedic, and the way he'll uh, uh, mix uh, with everything, it'll. Um, you keep talking, sorry. Sorry, um, it'll it'll uh, work well and mesh well with my cast, mm-hmm. as opposed to yours, um, who wouldn't be funny in an all serious cast. You need some levity, and yours, uh, Casey Affleck, I feel like doesn't have as much comedy chops, um, especially and since vo- he hasn't. And vocally, he's not known for his vocal presence it's, as an actor. If he's going to be a voice of a skeleton, if he's going to be the his voice, voice is a little thin, a little reedy. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's so but good. that that wouldn't read well as someone who needs to be somewhat confident and somewhat in a situation because he's dead and has to be, you know, feel like that's a norm to be dead mm-hmm. and still alive. I'm going to go Doug Jones. Come on. Ah. Uh, okay, all right. All right. Okay, <laughs> the next one. <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown is too young. Tony, she's too darn young. I love her. She's great. An 11 year old in fishnets? Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Okay. It's like, no, no, no. First off, wait, 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 wait. A sexy. Okay, the DCU, yeah. or EU, I, I don't know what it is, um, called, but they over sexualize their women. Look at Harley Quinn and, and everything. It's true. The, in every shot, it was basically her ass. I think if you cast someone like this, you can't do that. So you don't put her in fishnets, you put her in a good pants, and she's also a fantastic actress. Then, Tony wins the round. <laughs> You've already gotten your three points. Oh, what? Yeah, he what did I, it. He's selling it. Uh, I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. Woo-hoo. And I'm looking, and I'm like, he got right. already the most points, and you can't win now, actor, because you didn't. You've already lost three rounds. I didn't know we were. I got a point. It was, it was done. Uh-huh. It was Are so you long. Proud? I was really going to... with Millie Bobby Brown for Zatanna? Yeah, see, that was a really good argument. Mm, okay. Tony wins. All right. Okay. Tony wins. I liked it. It was good. He's, he's strong. He was Nicely strong. Nicely done, Tony. I did like Thank his most deaf as Dead Man. I was like, that's actually <laughs> right? pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Might be good, actually. Yeah. That was, I did uh, like Doug Jones. It was very hard to argue Doug Jones. It was a tough between those two. Most deaf's uh, voice with Doug Jones doing yeah. the yeah. Actually, that's that's that, what I, I think, would, think works, Yeah, and then actually. Casey Affleck, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's just, I think that he's a good actor. He's just so insubstantial for, like, a ghostly presence. He's he's come on, Billy Zane? That was an inspired choice, too. That was also on Tony's list. I think you're Billy Zane's manager. I think Billy Zane is a cool guy. He's a cool dude, Billy Zane. Uh, round three. All right, The Rock's character in Fast and the Furious was originally <laughs> going to be Tommy Lee Jones. Isn't that fascinating? Fast Five? Sure. Yeah, sure. So we thought it'd be fun if we uh, we switched it up, and we asked you guys to improve a movie by replacing any actor with Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> so pick any movie and tell me what movie world or movie would have been better if you had replaced an actor with Tommy Lee Jones. And Tony, you're first this time. Um, first, um, the movie I picked is Pineapple Express. The character I picked is Red, played by Danny McBride. Wow. I would love to see Tommy Lee Jones play the... <laughs> see? I would love him to ha- like have to explain how he got a cold sore out of eating a lollipop out of a, a, um, a hooker's... Yeah, I don't know if yeah, I can say that yeah. word. Um, having homoerotic <laughs> moments with James Franco fighting each other, getting shot. I think those are moments, and, and we haven't seen Tommy Lee Jones ever in a true, true comedy, and I would love to see him flex those muscles. Mark? 
I went a little bit more with the ridiculous side. <laughs> yes, um, so I, my choice was Tommy Lee Jones to play the Ansel Elgort role in The Fault in Our Stars. Okay, there he is. Well, at least they found a, a young picture. A young Tommy Lee Jones. Well, what uh, age Tommy Lee Jones were you envisioning? Now. I was thinking instead of him having cancer, he has that disease Robin Williams had in Jack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so you're rewriting the film, too. Well, not really. It's a, it's a fatal disease no matter what. He's going to die okay. at the end. Does it matter how? Does it matter yeah, the so road? So, yes, you are rewriting the movie. Okay. But I, th I think... <laughs> I, I, yeah. So, I, 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 think, I think that I could be a really... I, I think that... It's just an, an interesting amount of ridiculous casting, and it feels Would like... Would you still keep Shailene Woodley as his oh, love interest? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Hey, he's putting an 11-year-old in the Justice League dark, <laughs> so I can put a 70-year-old with a 20-year-old. Um, I just think it would I think it would add a much-needed lightness to that movie, because that movie is so unrelentingly depressing. You know, teenagers with lung cancer <laughs> and amputations, and I think Tommy Lee Jones doing it would just be... Utterly ridiculous. It might not be a good movie, but it would be a great. It might be, but it would be a great movie for the reasons that you'd want to watch it over and over again. Hector, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, I went with a movie that kind of bummed me out this year, and I thought, what ended up really bumming me out about it? And I landed on the performance and the way that the character was envisioned—not just the performance, but both of them in combination—of Lex Luthor in Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Now, if he were to be played by Tommy Lee Jones in a bad wig, get this: Tommy Lee Jones in a bad wig. Uh, would bring a gravitas to this character that was missing. I was frankly annoyed by this younger version of Lex Luthor, and I got no problems with young actors, you know, t doing new spins on the thing. But I felt like this particular role needed a guy with some. I just want to see this guy do the scenes with Holly Hunter, talking about uh, 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 grandma, uh, grandma's peach tea, and everything, uh, you know. And and I think it would be fantastic. I think that um, just to hear Tommy Lee Jones's voice saying some of those things. If you look back at his performance in Men in Black, and he just had that beautiful delivery, you know, where he was he was talking to Will Smith and he would say uh, people are smart, or a person is smart, people are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals and you know it. 1500 years ago we knew that the earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago we knew the earth was flat and 15 minutes ago you knew that we were alone in the universe. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. So to hear that voice Somebody's Lex, auditioning for a workshop. The Lex <laughs> Luthor stuff. <laughs> dropping monologues. The Lex Luthor Ooh. stuff of... Uh, have you done that in uh, audition yet, Hector? No, I haven't. I, I, I do a terrible Tommy Lee Jones impression, but I'm trying to get you guys really? to use your imagination. And to, 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 but just to good. hear him say, you know, I figured out way back that if God is all-powerful, <laughs> he cannot be all-good. And if he's all-good, he cannot be all-powerful. Just to hear him say that kind of stuff, it has more weight to me than, than Jesse Eisenberg doing this thing and being really freaked out and kind of, you know, <laughs> all over the place and fluttering. So I would love that to ground it. I think that he would be scarier than the character was. I think that he would be charming. It would be really similar to how the Amazing Spider-Man 2 kind of tried to cast um, uh, a, a, sort of an older Southern Norman Osborn, uh, Chris Cooper, for one scene, and then it was totally gutted, and they didn't really figure out how to work it out. But but a, a Lex Luthor or Norman Osborn type businessman, but that Southern sort of gentleman, that thing that Tommy Lee Jones can do, I think would be terrifying. And I think it would be great. All right, what do you guys think? You can't fix Batman vs. Superman, no matter what you I do. Can, I, listen, you can't. the question no, was, no, can no, you no, improve no. the movie? And I think that replacing Jesse Eisenberg does improve Batman vs. Superman. Is it all the problems still there? Of course, yeah, yes, but, but they're there. there but there's but problems with it. the narrative, they, like yeah. the, you, the script and everything. You're not mm -hmm. changing that, so there's not much you can do about that. <laughs> That's going to still be terrible no matter what, if, even if you do add Tommy Lee Jones. And has he ever done a superhero movie? Besides, Batman... Captain America, the first Avenger. And Captain oh my America, God, that's the first Avenger. He was oh, two-faced. Wow. Two and he, were, well, yeah. if it and he was the inspiration the for the prune face mask that's in Dick Tracy. No, well, get out of here. Oh. What is and, your plan today? <laughs> and uh, uh, you said, I forgot. Okay. Shailene Woodley. Oh. Shailene Woodley. <laughs> Shailene, you were playing Shailene Woodley. Fault in Our Stars. Oh, in The Fault in Our Stars. Come that's on. like funny, but it's not going to improve the movie. It's oh, totally, I think it's a much better movie if Tommy Lee Jones is in it. No, absolutely not. You add you add him to me, you're making him a drug dealer who's put in situations that he could actually be acting in and and just making it a overall much better movie. Here's hey, the, here's Nick Cage about... played a teenager in Peggy Sue Got Married. Tommy Lee Jones is a much better actor than Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Thus, it improves over... I, oh, you were I smiling. Think... You're out of this round <laughs> yeah. and you know it. Yeah, so uh, how, who, who, who would you see, Mark, out of the other two? Which one do you like better? Um... Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Pineapple Express. Would you Express. rather Hold see yeah, would it you, would Batman would, versus Superman again? It would be great, but... <laughs> I actually like Batman versus Superman. Exactly. <laughs> I knew <laughs> that, Tony. I knew that going into it. But, but I, do th I, do think, I do think it ultimately comes back to the rewatchability factor sure. for me of these movies. I think Pineapple Express, you know, as long as Batman versus Superman is, these mm -hmm. Judd Apatow comedies are always two hours <laughs> and 45 minutes long. <laughs> and they sh if, if Pineapple Express, if we could remove a half hour from it with Tommy Lee Jones, yeah. I, think he, I, think he's, I think he's Chris Walken in, in Pulp Fiction. I think he's great in that. 
But yeah. putting him in the putting him in the movie as it exists now, just replacing him, I would rather watch him in Batman vs Superman. But he would change things. He's Tommy Lee Jones. He would improve both. He of would the improve movies. both. He would yeah. improve and both. We'll movies. find out what the runtime of Pineapple Express is. <laughs> Pineapple but, Express. Wait, it, it's, <laughs> but it's but, over two hours. We'll find out. Might be. I think we'll it's an hour out. and four. Um, well, maybe. Yeah, that's what but, I suspected. Uh, Dan's there to tell us. Uh, but um. Uh, Danny McBride is so great, though. Danny McBride, Danny McBride is, so McBride is great, 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 but it's it's. I'm not. Such a I'm, listen, he has to replace a character. Ansel yeah. Egort was. <laughs> can't even say that. He's um, out. <laughs> I'm just. I guess yeah, no, was, those um, are really inspiring choices. But I'm choices. just saying, Je- Jesse Eisenberg is is great in in other things. But yeah. that movie is just absolutely terrible. You rewatch it, it's still gonna be terrible. Even if Tommy Lee Jones is there, because you're still gonna get mad at all the plot points that are wrong, all the different spear things that you have <laughs> at least this even if Tommy Lee Jones is absolutely horrendous in every scene there's still other things you'd want to watch in the film but he would be amazing in the film and I think he could add something more to it like a more dangerous feel for uh, Seth Rogen's Certainly. character and you can make it a little more dramatic well, and a little more watchable he, if he brings if Tommy Lee Jones brings to both of these movies the performance he brought to Cobb a movie no one saw because Ty no. Cobb is one of the most unlikable people in the history of humans mm. but Cobb is a, he's sinister and scary and charismatic Ooh. I think I think he improves both of these movies it depends on what the running time is oh, for my come vote. on. Oh. You're killing well, me. Final thought, Hector and Tony. Final thought is is that uh, I think it's a great call, but I love Tony. Mc- I love Danny McBride at, in the Tony role. McBride. Danny Mc- Tony McBride. <laughs> Danny McBride as Red is, is one of his breakout roles early in his career, and I think that uh, we would be missing a lot. I wouldn't be missing anything that Jesse Eisenberg tried, attempted to do in his performance by replacing that actor and keeping even the exact it, same dialogue. I think that it would still be... It's the same movie, absolutely. I mean, but I, it has improved... And there'd be one less thing that I disliked, which would be the Yeah, but the I mean, top. like, Danny McBride is not... We're not replacing them and then taking away Danny McBride's career. He's still going to be Danny McBride. It was True. amazing in a bunch of other things. We're just improving Pineapple Express by adding another amazing actor to that movie, mm-hmm. which is Tommy Lee Jones. And I think that's the best thing. Ugh. This was tough, actually. This has been like a serious episode. Yes. Two, yeah. two, good, two good choices yeah. in that round. My choice is the best. <laughs> Yours was funny. <laughs> I want to watch that. My, my yes. other choice was similar. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown, going back, is 12 years old, not 11 years old. Uh, Granny's Peach Tea was the yep. pea-flavored yes. beverage <laughs> in Peach Batman v Superman. Tommy Lee Jones has been in five comic book movies, Men in Black 1 through 3, Batman Forever, Captain America, the First Avenger. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pineapple Express had a runtime of one hour, 51 minutes. Really? Cobb, coincidentally, has a runtime of two hours and eight minutes. <laughs> It'll feel less long uh, when, also, when Tommy Lee Jones is in it. Uh, Sean Forney, at Sean Forney on Twitter, at the request uh, uh, Mark to have a young picture of Timely Jones for Fault in Our Stars says there's no such thing as a young picture. <laughs> so there you go. And young of girl. course I've got the poll uh, which I can give you the results of whenever you'd like. Yeah, even Tommy Lee Jones, when he was in a TV movie called The Executioner's Song in the like early '80s, looked like he was 75 years old. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Andy, what about that? Sh- what about that scene at the rooftop and Superman Shh. shows up? <laughs> He's got the monologue prepared. I do. Yeah. I got another line. Oh, also, man, you know what's both, a great thing? I just saw good. Electric Company. Um, uh, Morgan, a young Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Easy Reader. Oh yeah. That's amazing. Still belt, belt bottom <laughs> jeans and the, the afro. Yeah. That's amazing. It would improve the movie more, so which is what you said. So Hector gets the point. Come in. Very close though. That was a really good one. <sighs> Man, he had me on the ropes. The gravitas. Tony. It, w- it would have made the movie better. <sighs> You're still as good without it. Could be good. It was a. It was a. It was yeah. a tough one. Oh, so Very stressed. close. You Somebody are... out there cut together Ooh. the trailer of Fault in Our Stars with Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Did they no. really? From Cobb. From Cobb. From He's Cobb. asking it. Mark and She's like, uh, she'll be like, I'm dying. And then you cut to the fugitive. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. And then he, uh, he pushes her off the dam. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, round amazing. four. Uh, Sean Smith, 118 on oh. Twitter, brought this one. Guys, I'm excited for this. John Turturro is playing Jesus again from The, the Big Lebowski. Ooh. The Jesus is going to come back. Jesus. Uh, uh, so Sean Jesus. Smith wanted to ask, uh, what supporting character from any movie deserves their own spinoff <laughs> movie? So in honor of the Jesus coming back, which I want to see that movie, yeah. what other char- supporting character deserves their own movie? Uh, we're starting back to you, Mark. Um, I picked Rebecca Ferguson, who played Ilsa Faust in the most recent Mission Impossible so movie. Great. Because that 
was um, I had only ever seen the first oh. Mission Impossible movie before I saw this most recent one. Three is really good. I, I've, I've watched them all. Four is good. Three, three um, and four, five are good. Cool. But uh, but Mission Impossible Two's Five was just great. It was an action film that felt like an '80s film because there were so many practical effects. And instead of trying to shoehorn in some awkward romance that didn't work, like they do on all the Lethal Weapon movies and lots of Tom Cruise movies. Rebecca Ferguson's character was so compelling and so interesting that every time she was on screen, it was electric. All the all the different misdirections she had with her character, and once again, she held her own with Tom Cruise. She's not a a, a big name actress in the United States, but she held her own with Tom Cruise and electrified that movie. And we're now in an era of female leads, you know, with the Divergence and the Hunger Games and with the Harley Quinn movie coming out and Wonder Woman, so we can have female leads. And I just think I would love to see an Elsa Faust movie. I just thought she was such a compelling character, and she elevated all the proceedings that movie made. A really great. I think it's a better James Bond film than most James Bond films. Actually. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I, it's a great character. All right, Hector, what's your pick? Well, it hasn't officially been greenlit yet. That is why I am doubling down on Harley Quinn, a spinoff from Suicide, starring Margot Robbie. This is my pick. I think that no matter how much that movie tried to objectify her, like you were mentioning earlier, Tony, how, mu- how much the cinematography tried to show her butt and all the booty shorts, how much the, the character was written as being in that phase of Harley Quinn that is really uncomfortable and difficult and, and tough to root for where she is still head over heels for this awful Jared Leto Joker guy. I think that despite all of that, Margot Robbie was still fantastic in this role. She was a highlight. She's right next there to Will Smith. She's a movie star. And if the rumors are true, that she went out and uh, she had difficulties with the costume on set. She had difficulties with some of the dialogue, but she went ahead and did it. She loves the character. The rumors are true that she went out and got a writer herself and came up with a pitch for a har- spin-off Harley Quinn movie that it also involves Batgirl and Poison Ivy and is just going to be like a, 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 a Gotham City Sirens movie. Oh my God, that needs to happen so bad and Warner Brothers needs to greenlight that immediately. So, so fast. So that's going to be my pick for a uh, spin-off. Great. Tony, what's your pick? I pick Zed from Pulp Fiction. Zed's dead, baby. Zed's not dead, baby. Zed's not dead. (laughs) To explain. I think this is going to be... I think he deserves so much because he's such a compelling character. In in five minutes of the movie, or however long he had... He was so electric. You wanted to see more. I want to know more of his backstory. Like, how did he get his chopper? Um, I, how did how did he become a cop and then end up like raping people? And 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 how did how does he know those people? How did they get the gimp? I want to know all these things as well as returning to that Pulp Fiction world would be amazing because then you have a list of characters that you can add on to it, including Ving Rhames and Samuel L. Jackson and all these amazing characters from that movie, and you can just use it, and this would be a prequel to see before how he became Zed. Um, and I think it's just, that's that he deserves it more than these other guys. <laughs> Because he's also an underrated actor. Thoughts, guys? Yeah. Um, I think there was a Zed movie made already. It's called Dahmer. Um, I don't know if I want to spend two hours of my life with him. I think he's a compelling character, but I think he's a spice, not an entree. And I don't think yours technically counts because that movie's going to get made. She's Hasn't in a movie. Been yeah. they, no, no. It's in, it's in development. But, but they paid a writer. That's actually kind of cheating because the movie's further along. These aren't and not even only being that, talked but about. Like, with with Harley Quinn, we're gonna get more of her regardless. She's gonna be in other movies, so she doesn't need her own spinoff. Even oh, with us, well, she won't. she's gonna get her spinoff. So I don't. Th- I think she's great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I think she elevated the material. One thousand percent. I think. I think she owned all her sexuality in it. What yeah. could have been a very trampy sort of yes. gross mm-hmm. misogynist character. Mm-hmm. She elevated that movie so much. She reminds me of Char- Charlize Theron, this beautiful woman who's also a great actor. Absolutely. Actress. Absolutely. And and well, she, to be fair, but, on I, your but, point, I, but I but I think that's I think that's kind of cheating. Fair, I don't and think and she there's... doesn't deserve it really because she's gonna get. more more things. She's going to do more. And, well, and I think she deserves it. I would watch it. T- I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm Margot more... Robbie? You're talking about Margot Robbie? No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying the character Harley Quinn. Mm, yeah. And also, Harley Quinn is a great character, an amazing character, but an amazing supporting character. I can't see her leading anything by herself. She is as great as her lead is. She was great because Will Smith's Deadshot was fantastic, mm-hmm. putting that moral uh, uh, link and, and that thing with the Joker. All these things, she was great because of these other people. She's a fantastic supporting character. I don't think she's she could lead her own film. I think she absolutely could. I think there's been a ton of Harley Quinn stories. Uh, comic book readers know. I think that she has a really compelling after the trauma story and a really interesting arc where she's like, I'm done with the Joker. And I think that that's the character that audiences want to see. That's, that's not my argument with it. My argument is that that's already in development, which well, means this movie made $700 million, be, so that's going to happen. I know, but I to think, be fair, if I could just be real cynical for a second, there's been lots of writers that have been hired to write movies that never get made. So the reason I picked it is because it's like, I want that green light. It hasn't happened yet. As soon as I'm 
sitting down in the theater and I see a trailer for it, then I'll believe that Warner Brothers pulled the trigger on it. And until then, still counts. And I still counts. What are your thoughts on Zed? I, I don't uh, think Zed, I don't, I don't think Zed carries a, a movie by himself. And you even said you would bring in all the other characters in Pulp Fiction, so he'd kind of be a supporting character in an ensemble film. I, when I was watching Mission Impossible Five, every time Rebecca Ferguson was on screen, I was completely. I forgot I was watching a Tom Cruise movie. I would follow mm-hmm. that character. I want to see her adventures. I want to see her get the franchise that Salt didn't get with Angelina Jolie. She was a, she was a female. She was a woman, an actress, but she wasn't playing a female character. She was playing mm-hmm. a character who happened to be a woman. Yeah. She was just so con- and I'd never seen her before. There were no pre- preconceived notions with her. So to be a blank slate and bring that sort of compelling character opposite the biggest movie star in the world, owning the movie with him yeah. is pretty compelling. I think Harley's uh, going to get a movie. Sure. I just don't think there's a Zed centric movie. <laughs> I don't. That's I don't exist. think there's one with you. I think it's like I found her extremely boring. I did not like Ooh. the film. I thought it was just basically trying to be a Bond film while still trying to be Mission Impossible, and I thought it was a terrible movie. I really did not like it. Um, the only good parts about that, and if you had said Simon Pegg in Mission Impossible, right. then I would have I would have agreed because he is a much more compelling character. I love every time he's on screen. I love it, and you should have chosen that character or Money Penny from Bond since it is basically just a Bond ripoff. Money, Mission I'll, Impossible. I'll, I'll do one better. I'll do one better. Instead of Mark getting a spinoff for Ilsa Faust, who was fantastic, mm-hmm. but again, you hadn't seen three and four when we talked about mm-hmm. Rogue Nation last time we talked mm-hmm. about it. Three, four, and five, the J.J. Abrams directed and then produced. They're more about that ensemble as opposed to the first two movies, which are like the Tom Cruise vehicles. Yes. But right. even even with the cast that she's sure. in, Mission Impossible Five, she's a standout. She's Absolutely. she's got she's got Simon Pegg, Jeremy oh, Renner, yeah, Ving Rhames, Ving Rhames Al, but, Alec but Baldwin, and, she Tom Cruise, and she owns yeah. that performance. I'll do you one she's better. A, they tried to spin off uh, Mission Impossible or keep the franchise going with Jeremy Renner and four, and it didn't happen. So well, they because he's a block him. of wood, right? So how about this? Instead of getting a spin off with a, a, an, an Ilsa Faust movie, which is tough to market, how about just Mission Impossible Six, just with Ilsa Faust? Like she's the person who leads the next Mission Impossible team, and then Tom Cruise is the minor supporting, or he's not. And then you continue the franchise with that. Tom Cruise is like, never a supporting character. Okay, fair. Cruise but I feel movie. like it, instead of the, the spinoff thing, the way that they try Tropic to do with like, with with Jinx from back in like Die Another Day, Halle Berry, they were talking about getting her own movie. How about just continue the franchise with Ilsa Faust? She you don't have just to do make it a spinoff. Impossible. Don't have to make it. Well, spin-off. then she's still the lead. So technically, yeah. that yeah. is a spinoff because it's a Tom Cruise but franchise. It's Mission Impossible Six. I heard enough, Dan. Rebecca Ferguson is slated to return in Mission Impossible Six. There's yes. been talk as far back as May. Uh, about a Harley Quinn spinoff movie. Now, the rumors have been that it will be not necessarily centered on Harley Quinn, but a kind of Birds of Prey-esque, yeah. centered on the female heroes and villains of the DC Universe. But like uh, like you know, everyone said, it's not officially greenlit Still as counts. yet. Still counts, Andy. Uh, there was talk <laughs> of a one Pulp Fiction spinoff movie that never happened. Of course, that was the Vega Brothers, which was the long-rumored team-up between... John Travolta and Michael Madsen that never happened. They're characters from uh, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. But Ooh. no talk mm-hmm. that I've seen on the internet of a Zed spinoff. <laughs> so there you go. Also, I have the poll results. When and if you'd like to hear it. I think Mark made the best argument Damn. there. And then I think you helped him when you were like, Ooh. yeah, she'll just do her own Mission Impossible movie. I mean, that is the <sighs> spinoff movie. It's, um, it's a, it's a it sequel. It is. And she's, it's leading, a she's leading it. It's a spinoff yeah. movie. Uh, and so I, I got to give it to Mark. Mark gets the point. I really should have doubled down on the Tarantino coming back. <laughs> <laughs> but then he was right. It made it more of an ensemble for you and not really yeah. enough about Zed. That's I, I, where it's tough. I wanted to come back on that. It was that. close. <laughs> uh, round five. Oof. All right, guys. Does, here we does go. Does Hector even have to debate in this? Because he's got two, right? Yeah, well, he can get another point. Oh, and then he it's a tie between the speed us. Right? Yeah. Oh. Oh. You're trying to take away a point from Hector, Mark? No, I was saying he doesn't. <laughs> he's going to be in the he final can bow round out. No I, I wouldn't if I were him. Would you like to bow out of this round? Absolutely not. No, I got a good one. Come on, bud. I feel good about this. Sorry. Sorry, Tony. All right, guys. Since Guardians of the Galaxy is getting a new ride at Disney, uh, apparently, I think they've confirmed that, right? They're mm-hmm. taking over Tower of Terror, which is sad, but it'll still exist in Orlando. But in uh, Hollywood, we're going to get a Guardians of the Galaxy ride, which should be pretty fun. Um, so we want Wait, you guys to pitch uh-huh. a new MCU hero or scene that could make the best Disneyland attraction. Uh, Hector, you're up first. What MCU right. moment or mo- person or oh, crap. what have you makes the best uh, I got it right here. I got the whole pitch ride. right here. Uh, I'm pulling Anna it monologue. Uh, An Anna monologue. <laughs> Uh, This is Ant-Man and the Wasp in Tales to Astonish. Scott Lang, played by Paul Rudd, and Hope Van Dyne, played by Evangeline Lilly, reprise their roles as Ant-Man and the Wasp to team up and stop Elias Egghead Star, played by David Cross, 
from stealing the yellow jacket technology from the first movie. The ride works like Star Tours. You go into a thing, you sit down, and it's a pod. The riders follow Scott and Hope along in a special Pym particle pod, shrinking down in Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas's lab, first, then finding out that the bad guy's trying to steal technology, so you gotta follow him. You ride along with flying ants, and you are fighting yellow jacket while you're shrunken. Also, the riders will turn into giant man at the end in this like, real big moment. So this is a Star Tours ride that you can even replace the footage. It would be shot like an MCU movie. Peyton Reed could direct it. That's fine. You could have a cameo by Flash Thompson. That wouldn't make sense, but that would be cool. But it would take, take place in the MCU, and just like Star Tours, you can go in and replace some of the footage and different things that you shrink down to and go and experience. You can get a Michael Pena cameo as Luis. You can visit different parts of San Francisco while you're shrunken. It would be like the old school Honey, I Shrunk the Ride, Honey, I Shrunk the, the, the audience ride show that was in uh, Anaheim back in the day. But it's something that you could constantly update and replace and, and keep going while Ant-Man and the Wasp are still sort of viable in the MCU for as long as they want to be. And it would be really, really cool to experience the sort of shrunken world like we did in the movie while also fighting. And then at the end, you go giant and everyone's like, whoa, we're a giant pot. Anyway, it'd be a ton of fun and I would definitely like it. Great. Tony, what's your ride? My ride is the scene from Iron Man 3 where you have the people in the airplane falling out of the airplane and having to link up with each other um, through Iron Man. And the way the ride would work is you would, um, <clears throat> you would enter and you would be taken up to the top. Since Tower of Terrors is going away, I thought this would be a perfect ride to replace it mm -hmm. since we won't get it again. And at the top of the ride, you would um, get in a link and your body would face forward. Uh, you would be linking up and... There would be um, what are they? Wind tunnels that would send jets of airs up, and you would fall down, and the windows would come open, and you'd see the sky just coming in, and um, with all the light, and you would have to link up with each other. People on the other t um, uh, chairs that are just moving, kind of in a circular thing, as Iron Man is in the center, and you have to try to grab each other to try to get him. And I think that's the ride you want to do because it's something new. You've never seen it before. People are going to be excited. People love when if. You you ask people who love roller coasters because I don't why you go on it you would go on it for the experience for the adrenaline and what more than the the, the the sheer sensation of falling down with your face coming down having to link up with your friends being having to, it be an adventure you would feel like you're a part of the movie you would feel like I'm 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 in an action scene right now Cool, Mark. Awesome. Mine would be uh, the the scene from Thor: The Dark World with Loki and Thor and Jane Foster, the chase through Asgard on, the, on those flights. I think you could do a really great action ride. You could have the, the the ship spin around. It takes you through a world we haven't seen before with with Asgard. You can actually have the Thor or the Loki animatronics in either things. You know the way the, the Indiana Jones ride is different every time you do it. That's you could cool. have a different hero on the ride, and they do such great audio animatronics. Now I don't know if you've seen the footage of the the Johnny Depp. Uh, oh, I've been on Pirates the Caribbean it's in awesome. Shanghai. It's amazing. Oh, really? It's amazing. They do a combination of like the uh, Back to the Future ride with projection and with real motion. Mm -hmm. And I think you do something really, really, really cool and really bright and really fun. I think all these are interesting. I, I think though a plane crash ride at a theme park, they're never going to do because it's just too close to reality. I think it could be a fun ride. I think the insurance of having people, the variables and then actually meet is going to be really difficult. And I think we've already seen the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids ride. Yeah. So I don't know why we, why we really need that. And I don't know where Ant-Man and Wasp were in that. It felt it like a tour of San Francisco. Yeah, I, wanna, San I want Francisco. superhero stuff, and this I think you could do a really cool ride with you know with the explosions and splashing water and all the magic and stuff like Thought that. He, he knocked you guys down. What do you think of his? Um, well, I think if we have Pirates of the Caribbean. There's nothing new with yours. I guess what you're saying is right, but we're not pitching to actually make right now. We're pitching to see what would be the best ride oh, for the attraction. Be. And I think mine's would be the best because it is something new. Kids want to go. I grew up in Anaheim. I grew mm -hmm. up in Dis at Disneyland. I know which rides mm -hmm. everyone wants to go on, and and no one wants to go to those boring rides like Pirates of the Caribbean after you've done it once you want to keep going every single time to feel like you're dropping that's my favorite thing to do on a roller coaster a family and theme park is never going to make a ride that opens with a plane exploding I'm, I'm not they're saying they're just never going to and that's <laughs> integral to your ride the plane has to explode and they have to fall falling from a plane in a post 9-11 world is never going to be a theme park ride maybe in Saudi Arabia but never in America <laughs> Oof. Well, I think it can be a thing because it doesn't need to explode. We can just have a, a thing. But it's a skydiving ride, and it's the it's, ride. It's the ride at Nuts Berry Farm. 
There's a, I don't know which category 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 category. Category. I don't know that one. Yeah. I don't. Well, no, here's, but here's, regardless, here's, you're falling down. Yeah. It's different. It's something new. You like you're saying then with it's him, not, honey. Then shark. it's not the scene from the Iron Man movie. It, it is a scene because all you have to do is place little uh, 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 plane fragments all over the thing, and you design the plane on the top, and you just dive down. I think it's going to be it's, a hard sell to your stockholders to make a plane crash ride. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to. These rides are expensive to make, and I don't think anyone's going to say, "Hey, but, let's have." But we, we were talking about we were, we were talking about 9/11 so long ago, and and that the first. First kid would be in uh, yeah. freshman in college now. These kids don't remember, and kids are the ones who go on the ride. It would absolutely sell for someone. If you're asking me, oh, do you want to skydive? Do you want to do that? Yes, I want to do that. Do I want to go through a boring ride where maybe there's some explosions, but I'm sitting in a chair and some things go giant and just so I want to. But your ride is conceptually something. a skydiving ride. It's I'm falling out of my blown up plane ride. That's a different. That's and an why is that a bad thing? Why can't why can't that be a ride? That's an amazing ride. I would go on it. I'm pretty sure more people who are adrenaline junkies would All do right, it. we're going to establish the ride's fair, That's, but it's a fair point. Uh, what do you guys think of the Thor ride? Here's the problem with the Thor ride. Uh, for better or worse, the Thor movies, I like them. I really like Thor The Dark World. It's the lesser of the Marvel movies so far. And and to go and, and kind of hone in on that and be like, hey guys, remember Thor The Dark World? It's That's also kind of a tough sell, I it feel It made like. more money than Ant-Man. Thor the Dark World? Thor the Dark World made more money than Ant Man. Nobody cares about how much money you make. That doesn't even matter. That doesn't matter. Oh, 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 this time, this time it doesn't matter. I, I forgot the rules. The rules change matter. every round. I forgot. Thor's I forgot. fun and it would be cool, but it's 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 something that I don't think you could capture the exact experience of riding, you know, through. getting shot through Asgard because it, whether it's just a roller coaster, then it's not real and there's going to be certain things. Or if it's like a Pirates of the Caribbean thing where it's like sort of an underground ride, there, you know, I'm, I'm picturing like the Venetian at Las Vegas where there's a fake sky because you look up and, and as there's animatronics and stuff. And like, that's cool. It's not all the way the same sort of thrill. Well, they're not really shrinking on your ride either. It, here's the thing, so. though. It's, it's similar to Star Tours in where people would come in and sit down and you see C-3PO and R2-D2 and you just go on a ship and kind of go on an adventure. So I created the Pim Particle Pod where Everybody sits down the same way that little lamb was in that little thing and then shrunk down, right? Remember that part in the Ant-Man movie? So the audience does shrink because it's about the perspective. The cool thing about the shrinking thing that when you watch the Ant-Man movie is the first time he shrinks and he gets kicked around by people in the, in the nightclub in his apartment or whatever and he's falling through stuff. It's about seeing that world at that perspective. So that would be the but thrill Tony, of it. Tony, go ahead. We've, we've already seen rides like that and, and just go to an art museum if you want to really like yeah. get those huge go to things. The you don't, yeah, boring. exactly. You don't, you don't have to do that. And it would yeah, be boring. Picture, like, you're picture, just, picture, you're just, take your kids to an art museum. Be like, you want to go to an art museum or you want to go to Disneyland where there's an Ant-Man ride. Yeah, and then they'll be like, Ant-Man, uh, no thanks, I want to do that the one. The Ant-Man ride where you said the exciting part of it is touring and San also, Francisco you're, you're, tiny. You're, what, he was, what, he, what he was saying was right, though. It's like, you're like what, what's special about the ride? It's been done before so many times. You're just putting maybe some animatronics that do if some things. Broke, it's a, don't fix it. It's, it's nothing new and exciting. And in this world, I think you need to do something new and exciting to get people. Final thoughts, Mark? I ultimately think this, this ride's kind of dull. And we've seen it with big giant props before. We've seen that a lot. I think that I think once again, I think parts of that could be cool, but I don't. I think the inciting incident is a plane crash, and I don't think that's ever going to be at a family park. And I think the Asgard Adventure is super fun. It can be like the Back to the Future ride and the Jurassic. It can be a hybrid ride of an actual physical ride with a lot of projection stuff. And I think going through Asgard takes us to a different place. Both of these take place on Earth. This takes place in a world we haven't seen before. Final thought: World we haven't seen is Earth when it's shrunken down. You can go down into ant hills. You can go picture this. You come in, you sit down, and there is life size. It's, even though it's like a movie, there's life-size Michael Douglas, life-size uh, Scott Lang, played by Paul Rudd, life-size Evangeline Lilly. And it isn't until you shrink that things differ, and it's a really cool new perspective. Um, I think that my ride is, is easily updatable. You can go to different locations. And you, you, may think it's, you may think it's boring to tour San Francisco, but one of the most thrilling parts of that movie, of that whole sequence, is the first few times that Scott Lang shrinks down. He's riding an ant, and he's flying, and the world looks so different, and he's hanging onto the side of a cop car. And for a little pod of... of a bunch of people to do that and to tilt everybody. Everybody would get sick and throw up and it'd be awesome. Just like Star Tours. <laughs> it would be fantastic. And I think that the logistics of figuring out the um like a skydiving ride, whether or not it has an exploding plane or not, it doesn't but just the logistics of that's kind of tough to figure out. Thoughts on the logistics? Um and the rest? Okay. Yours is boring. It's it's like <laughs> I would not want to go on that. It's you're basically pitching an art uh, an art tour or something like that. It's like, look, check it out from a new perspective. Whoa! Fighting egghead, David Cross. Now the logistics. Uh, I was thinking about it, and you would have a circular thing 
throughout the whole entire thing. So it'd be kind of like a circle thing where you shoot down and you fall down and then you go back up and you do it like three times. Okay. And the way you link up is like maybe there's four people and they all are kind of going around like this sideways and you have your hands out there so that way no hands will get crushed and when they actually link up. <laughs> so when it comes together, they all link up, boom. And once you finally do link up, then Iron Man comes in and he grabs you all and he pulls you up to safety before you land in water because that's another element of my ride where you think you're f gonna fall into oh. water with your phone. You you have no idea it's gonna happen, but they save you right before it happens. So you have that fear as well. And you can also take a piss because, you know, it'll just fall in the water. What are you talking about, Tony? <laughs> Listen, hey. Well, if you can take a piss, uh, Dan. <laughs> We'll leave it to Mark and Draco to bring up 9-11 in a thing park yeah. round. It's uh, a plane crash ride. <laughs> all Jesus, right, all there, right. been plane crashes in bring it up right. again, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> Don't blame the messenger. Uh, Thor The Dark World did indeed make more money than Ant-Man. $519 million global for Ant-Man. six forty four for Thor The Dark World. Uh, wow. Guardians is called Mission Breakout. Opens next summer. Uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience was a show uh, for a 4D experience. It closed. <laughs> across all Disney parks back in 2010, which is a shame because not only did it have uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but I believe it had Rick Moranis. Yeah, I think so it had the original what? One of the yeah, last times awesome. you could still go see Rick they, Moranis. I would much rather see that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Captain EO? Captain EO is pretty sweet, though. Captain EO? Yep. Who does? Who doesn't love Captain EO? Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, how, how old's your kid, Andy? Four. Oh, man, he would love my ride so much. My so <laughs> uh, where it came down for me was, I think, you all had pretty good arguments against each other, but one did sound fun. Options or not, I got to go with Tony's and, and all the things he said. What? We've yes. seen these so many times, which he said. <laughs> I've seen all those rides a million times. He's pitching something new. If we could make that ride, oh we'd all God. line up to be on that ride first. Oh, so I got to give it to Tony. That yes. is insane. All you right, you wouldn't go Thank on that you. ride if it, if he could make that ride. I would go on any Marvel anything <laughs> ride. Exactly. Like, I can't wait, no one didn't just pitch like the the Civil War ride. That's what What's you could have done at all. The airport. Yeah, yeah, but it could yeah. turn into Ant Man, then you could be Iron Man. It's too much it's, to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> too, too expensive. What's the ride? You drive around a tarmac. I, I, yeah. Right. I, I didn't take you, time you, to think about it. You got to. The airport scene. You ride a staircase. Or Tony had a really good pitch of a Spider Man ride because he was describing this awesome like set piece from the. Tell it again. It was the plot of the movie. Who's the villain? Yeah, like you're fighting. Uh, we're, 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 I'm helping him out. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> that was great. That means, Tony, you make it to the end against Hector. Mark, awesome. you had one point, though. You're close. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're getting nicer, though, in defeat. <laughs> I think I don't take it seriously that, that, that you're and, wrong all the time. That, I think <laughs> the Elgar one did, didn't didn't help yeah. matters. I think when Tony brought up uh, homework at the beginning of the show, I think Mark was like, "I gotta be nice." He mentioned homework. And no, I, I was like, "Jesus, we're old." He's actually he actually does homework. What the hell is that? I don't well, miss I'm homework for five years. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. This is the speed round. Now, Tony, you've seen the show. You know how this works, right? You'll have twenty sure. seconds to say your answer, and then fifteen second rebuttals. If you both say the same answer, it's whoever said it first, uh, and then whoever. Whoever said it second will have to pick another option. Okay. Uh, I'm going to throw you questions. They're going to be quick and furious. The only tip I will give, which I always give new fighters now, is you can. the time doesn't start until you start talking. So you okay. can take a second to gather your thoughts and make sure you're ready to go. Do we have any thoughts before we begin? Uh, uh, I can't wait to see Spider-Man Homecoming. It's going to be great. I am, I am too. We'll, talk, we'll try and talk a little bit about He's it out after the fight. He's my favorite, obviously. All right. Aww. I know. Uh, Stop So, pandering. Brett, over there, I hope you've been having fun watching. I am indeed. Good. I may, I'm going to be calling upon you here to help me in, in this uh, as well as Mark. He's going to be fair <laughs> and just. <laughs> Uh, all right, here we go. Based on the arguments, and the first one is a bargain bin. We love these. Come in, uh, keep coming to men. People submit two DVDs or Blu-rays, whatever. Sometimes that's a, we haven't done that yet, but sometimes if you see extra things on the Blu-ray, it might might be more valuable than a okay. DVD. Uh, so all of it counts. Whatever you see in the picture, and this one came from uh, Reval. Uh, oh, is that um? Uh, did he submit Re his Revolori? own question? Tony Revolori said that. I don't think I did. <laughs> uh, that's not for, is that Raul's Twitter? I don't know. Is this Ravel's Twitter? Anyway, we'll find out in a second. Uh, these are the two movies. Check them out up on the screen. Oh, I'll Garfield movie. Ooh. I didn't hear who said what. <laughs> I said you each pick different ones. Garfield yeah. the movie. Each okay, Garfield. great. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't. Who was his Twitter? Who was his name? I can't say his Twitter name. Show me again that picture. The coolest. The, the cool coolest. The coolest. Revolve Alaska. Yeah, sorry, hard to say. Uh, the coolest. There you go. You got your picture in. All right. So who said which? 
I said, I said Alvin and the Chipmunks. And I said Garfield the movie. <laughs> who, who, who said it first? Uh, it's like at the same he, time. He was Hector. Bit. Okay, so you Hector, you got Alvin. Yeah. No, no, I got Alvin. I got oh, you, got, you got Garfield, <laughs> yeah, Hector. I, okay. You got Garfield. I got Alvin. And then okay, I'm just sorry. Uh, Tony is doing Alvin. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And Hector, you're at first with yeah. Garfield. Whenever you're ready. Two words, Brecken Meyer. Just kidding, three <laughs> words, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Just kidding, the real two words, Bill Murray. For better or worse, Bill Murray does the voice of Garfield in this thing. And it is cool because the guy who did the voice of Garfield in the cartoon back in the day did the voice of Bill Murray's character from Ghostbusters, but then he passed away, so then they cast Bill Murray in it accidentally because Bill Murray thought that a Coen brother wrote this movie. That's why he signed on to this thing. <laughs> so for that reason alone, just to hear Bill do it. Tony, whenever you're ready. You get great songs. Kids love these movies. It's actually a decent movie that you can rewatch, and it'd definitely be good. Garfield is actually really, really bad. It's a boring film. There's nothing good about it except for Bill Murray, and even them, he's shoehorning it in because it's not a, Joel, uh, a, a, a Coen, Coen Brother Coen, movie. Yeah. <laughs> and you, here we have um, uh, 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 the guy from Mallrats who's absolutely fantastic in the bit. I'll give you that, Jason Lee. Go ahead, Jason, Jason Lee. Lee. I think they miscast Jason Lee. I would love it if it was like Jim Carrey. I would love it if they actually tried in this thing because I like the Chipmunks and I know they didn't really try in Garfield, but they got Bill Murray. That's that's something. You know, they got Justin Long as the voice of Alvin in the Chipmunks thing. The only thing you have in your movie is Bill Murray. What I have is is a group of characters. They have great songs, popular songs, remixed to a point that you kind of like them. That's all I kind of got. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Whoo. All right, I, got a, I got a position, but Mark, I'll go to you first. I kind of think they're both awful. Yeah. But yeah. the fact that Bill Murray actually thought a Coen brother yes. wrote a, a, a yes. Garfield movie. I knew movie it was going to be that. Is kind of genius. Yeah. And Bill Murray trumps Jason Scientologist Lee. So. <laughs> hey, I religion's their own story. choice. Brett, over there on the couch, based on the arguments. I'll go with Tony on that one. Whoa. Thank you. Brett has an accent. Wait, Brett, yeah, where, Brett are where are you from? Australia. Oh. Australia. Oh, did, you bring awesome. did you bring Vegemite? I did not. Oh, oh, please, please don't. don't. Come, Come on. Don't. I think we still have the one from Alicia somewhere. Oh, it's great. I have, it's I have, a, I have a friend in Australia. Bison. I have a friend. Do you know the one guy <laughs> in the entire continent? Do you know one guy? Do you know Ryan Unicom? No. Oh, cool. <laughs> I should have owned it. That would have yeah, been great. Yeah, yeah, Ryan. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm with Brett on this one. I thought Tony somehow swayed me with the music and Wait, the characters what? and yes. the relationship. And yes. then you even, the admitted, you even admitted, yeah, it's not a very good movie, but it's got Bill Murray. He didn't do that, so I got to give Tony. He, he defended it to a fault, uh, so I got to give Tony the first point. Yes. Name, name one song in Alvin and the Chipmunks, Tony. In the first one? In I can name, okay, in the movie. He's got the soundtrack uh, on his iPod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've, I've seen a, it, so I can tell you. I have a five-year-old little brother. I've yeah. seen all, all right. of them yeah. so many times. It's a bunch of, I think it was Katy Perry's uh, uh, roar. Um, he might be right. That's that's not that's, that's the, the third one. That's, that's, a, that's the third chip. one. Road chip, I think. That's road chip. <laughs> no, uh, no, road chip's the fourth one. Uh, uh, oh. No, the first we, one is. Maybe we shouldn't argue. Uh, that's the, the, the monkation. What was the, the squeakle on the island? The, 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 well, the first uh, one has Chipwreck. 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 Is the third first one right. has the Christmas song. Bad day. Yeah, Christmas. Song. Oh, they're all pun titles too. Yeah. Uh, anyway, great. Well, two kitties. That was the squeakle. That was the original. That's true. But Bill Murray didn't do that one. Number two. I think he did. Still in Sector, right? Contract. Bill yeah. Murray did too, yeah. Oh, did he really? He came back yeah. after <laughs> admitting how terrible he was. He wouldn't do a Ghostbusters sequel, but yeah. he did two, chip, two Garfield movies. <laughs> I think movies. he did hey. Garfield too. Uh, all right, here we go. Number the two. The hugest paycheck he ever had. Yeah. Guys, what's the best movie with a one word title? Inception. Ooh. Dope. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I gotta go. You should just win just for that. <laughs> just for that. Go ahead, Tony. Talk shit about Joe. Oh, you impression. ready? Talk shit about Inception go first, whenever you're ready. <laughs> first off, can I make a disclaimer? Sorry, Rick Family you up. <laughs> I got you, Rick. I got you, baby. I'm I got you. For movie fights. I got you. I'm so sorry. Put me in Flash, Rick. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I still love you, Rick. <laughs> Okay. Way to bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> hey, I love him. He wants to win. <laughs> Inception has won four Oscars. It was nominated for more, I think. And it was an absolutely much better film because it's Christopher Nolan doing something that was extremely original. It has something that, that no one's ever done before and a story that no one's ever done before. Um, you have great characters with Michael Caine and um, uh, uh, Ellen Page and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and a bunch of other people doing amazing performances. It was done before in a Scrooge McDuck comic book, people found out that that's where the idea of entering people's dreams came from. And Dope was the most 
original Fresh thing. It had a great cast. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it had a brilliant use of music. It was retro. It was cool. It was fresh. It was also real. It showed LA in a really realistic way. And Inception was so like overstuffed and bloated and pretentious as hell. It was one of Christopher Nolan's most pretentious things. Did the top sit? Shut up with the top again. It was an absolutely brilliant film. People still love that and watch it today, all the time on repeat. Dope, it was just basically, uh, <laughs> was straight out of Compton, okay? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, come on! It was not, get out of here! It was not straight out of Compton. It's, look, Inception, Christopher Nolan gutted his own entire narrative by having that little tricky bull BS thing at the end, and it was, it's, it's bull crap, it's horse crap. Ooh, all right, man, man. I love that one. God damn it. <laughs> Brett, no. over there, what do you think based on the arguments? Um, I actually love Inception, but you make a very good point about it, though. Oh, I'm actually okay if I lose this one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're picking Inception? Uh, Hector, yeah. Oh, you're oh, going Hector. You gotta pick Dope. He picked Dope. Yep. Uh, uh, Mark, based on the arguments? Uh, based on the arguments, I agree. I think it's the, I think Inception's the most bloated, pretentious movie Chris Nolan's made. I think Dope um, I think Dope is a flawed movie, but I think, sure. it, I think it has, for a first feature, it has so much energy oh. and so much life and it's so exciting. <laughs> It's it is his fourth feature. It's, well, uh, he, it's his third. Is actually. it his third? Well, wow. the, yeah. the first one this this dumb guy saw. That was yeah. the first time I came in contact with. <laughs> and I thought he took what could have been a hackneyed, tired sort Very of John tired. Singleton retread and made a really fresh movie that was retro yeah. and had a real freshness to it. Yeah. He's straight to Compton. He's a good movie too. Hector said none of that. By the way. <laughs> yeah, he didn't say that. Uh, I, he quoted me. I said I said retro yeah. but new. I he said didn't that. say that. Uh, I did say that. He did say retro and new. He absolutely said that. Yeah. And Draco's paraphrasing. I would go, I thought Tony did give a pretty strong argument, and then he even had the balls to go against the hand that feeds. <laughs> so it's hard for me to do that. Where are you, Dan? <laughs> I think that Hector got bitten by his own cleverness because I think Tony <laughs> threw it right back in yeah. his face and had him on the balls of his feet. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, that I did have it. So two to two, judge can overrule then. So I gotta go. I gotta give Tony that point. Wow. I thought it was just stronger. I think yes. uh, Mark's hatred of Inception is blinding him a bit more than uh, also. But I Brett, I respect I your damn. opinion. I don't care about it enough to hate it. <laughs> I'm so <All> right. screwed. <laughs> Watch me go home and All then right. have. So Tony got that point. <laughs> Everyone hate uh, me now. I liked it. So I like that you so the ball to do it. Him? No, yeah. no, Tony's <laughs> mad at him. <laughs> Disney's mad at him. Like, uh, no, no, everyone loves him. Here we go. This is. <laughs> <laughs> that so was fans so are funny. mad. That was so funny. Oh Jesus! <laughs> hey, Rick, can, you, can you skip to a different one and come back to that? Wait, what is it though? Please do it. All right. Uh, you want me to give you a hard one or an easy it's one? It's probably about <laughs> no, Latinos, Tony. I really, I really want that one that you're laughing about. Yeah, okay, yeah, here we go. Really Let's get it. it. Here we Let's go. It. Here we go. Wes Anderson or Paul Thomas Anderson? <laughs> Wes Anderson. <laughs> oh, we got it. Paul Thomas Anderson. I okay. They're both good. The They're both. Anderson. These are both good. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. the the Resident Evil guy, right? <laughs> no, no, yeah. Not that one. Not that one. Oh, uh, all right. Well, Tom. Tom uh, there you go. Tony, you got your uh, your guy there, Wes, and then uh, <laughs> Hector. You got Paul. Yeah. It's awful choice. No, those are both fantastic yeah. choices. Let's see how you defend this, uh, Tony. You're Woo! first. Deep cuts. What if I snagged it? What if I was like, what's that? <laughs> That's what I was worried about. <laughs> I would have given up the point. <laughs> Wes Anderson has only gotten better from his start of his filmmaking career. He's doing True. so much amazing work. He's doing things that are ingenious that no one has ever done. There's many films like Paul Thomas Anderson that he does, and he even makes mistakes with um, uh, that last one he did with uh, Joaquin Phoenix, Inherent Vice. Wes Anderson has yet to make a mess up, I think, and he is, is now is getting more and more on a rise. Wes Anderson is fantastic. I think the Grand Budapest Hotel is, like people said, the most Wes Anderson-y of all of his movies, and he keeps getting better, but I think that it's honed in and he does a very specific thing. It's very specific. Paul Paul Thomas Anderson does different things. There Will Be Blood was incredible. No Country for Old Men. You go back to Boogie Nights. The guy that's, has, is that somebody else? That's the Coen Brothers. That's the that's Coen Brothers. No, put. the Coen Brothers was No Country for Old Men. But he did uh, There Will Be Blood and uh, thank, okay, right, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Tony gets that. this one. Yeah. <laughs> 15 seconds. Great. Okay. Boogie Nights and uh, There Will Be Blood were correct. Did, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, like you're saying, it is a very home style, but guess what? It still makes so much money. It made more than a hundred million dollars, which is more than he's ever made. Grand Budapest? The Grand Budapest That's Hotel. Awesome. So he is still making something that is widely accepted by a bunch of other people, so you can't say yeah. that it's a niche thing because it is accepted. Hector, whenever you're ready, your last fifteen seconds I'm here. Need Don't some give more up. Water. You never um, know. I'll get some too. Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights had a fake penis in it. <laughs> we know this. You cannot deny it. I'd like to see Wes Anderson do that. All right, that's how he's going out. 
Bam! Going out indeed. I was kidding about the water. I'm just, I got crushed on that one. No, I'm good. I'll take some water. I would love some <laughs> you know, sure. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, time's uh, up there. Uh, Brett, what do you think based on those arguments? Probably tiny for that one, actually. Thank you! Mm. Brett! Mm -hmm. Mark? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I would probably, I think that, um, Here you go, bud. Thank they're you both so very thank specific so filmmakers, but I think that Wes Anderson is a more consistent filmmaker. Based on the arguments, Mark. Uh, based on the arguments, <laughs> I think. Based on the arguments, <laughs> I think he got it. He, that's what he said, basically. I mentioned yeah, two I movies. Yeah, you you were actually onto something, I think, I mean, and then you got lost because you lost. You got no the, country. The guy didn't didn't no country. I think if you had continued where the path you were going, it would have been a fair fight, but you because didn't I'm get a, there. Because I'm a much bigger Wes Anderson. Because of that, <laughs> Tony why. gets the point, and I think yes. then the win. Correct. Is that it? Wow. Wow. I won. Yes! Done, Tony. Thank Nicely you! Done. It all started yeah. from you, so, I mean, again, biting the hand that Damn. got me here. Wow. If you had said Wes Anderson, that would have been much more interesting. Uh, ironically, uh, the Hector. guys that wrote No Country if, for if Old Men also Anderson, wrote I would have the point. point of yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not, I can't go against the two that I... Yeah. Yeah. At that, that point, was, I'm done. Yeah. Those are great questions. You uh, assholes. You bunch of jerks. Hey, Tony, Tony Rubio, you, have, you have the shot. Coming in. Man. That's the first time we've ever had one where they ask horrible questions to the person. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. He, he chose oh, Ask Dope. Elijah he asked Wood. Ask Elijah and he Wood. Chose. Best, we did yeah. Best Elijah Wood movie yeah. to Elijah. We did Best Lord of the Rings best movie to Elijah. Movie. Best oh, Kevin no. Smith movie to Kevin Smith. Oh, we always do that. We put, them, we put the pressure on. That's great. Uh, we, we had Green Hornet versus... Uh, oh, Green, Green Hornet, Hornet versus, versus Green uh, Lantern. Yeah. Uh, Seth Rogen. <laughs> That was a good there one. were no yeah. winners that day. <laughs> Spencer had got went pick Green Hornet or was trying yeah, to shit Spencer, on Green Hornet, yeah, Spencer, and then just looked up and saw Seth Rogen. He's like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer was like, "Bring it!" It was great. That's awesome. uh, all right, uh, really fun show. I look for. We'll talk a little bit more at the end of this show. And if you're an Emmy voter and watching us, this is your last chance to vote for us for honest trailers. So give it a shot. Best series in a best short form variety, variety series. series. <laughs> uh, so thank you for that, everybody. And that's we'll find out on September 11th. If we won, there's another September 11th mention. Come Mark. on, uh, Mark Andrego at Mark Andrego on Twitter. Anything you'd like to plug? Uh, yeah, no. There's going to be some big announcements at New York Con, New York Comic Con this cool. year. We'll yeah. be there too. So there'll be, there'll, 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 be, on Twitter. there'll be a bunch of really, really big announcements on a couple projects I'm working on. So and you'll be at the secret project we're yes, doing on and Tuesday. Come Tuesday if you're in LA. Yeah, come, it's going to be it amazing. Up. Uh, Hector Navarro, I hope you come too. Hector is funny. Yeah. What do you? Uh, what would you like to plug? Check out uh, superhero news on YouTube, but also check out if you like uh, animation, animation, classic animation, new animation, Nickelodeon, all animation in general. L you like listening to creative people talk about being creative. You like to listen to voice actors and actors talk about being creative. Check out the Nickelodeon animation podcast on iTunes and everywhere else to get your podcasts. It's really cool. I like it. Badass, Tony Re uh, Revolari. Welcome, man. You crushed it. What Thank would you, you like to plug? Much. You're in a little movie called Spider-Man Homecoming coming sure, out? Sure, We yeah. should probably check that out. Is this you audience can. It's, it's a tiny little <laughs> film. And That's then, a Polish film, right? Um, there's another show, Son of Zorn, and oh, you can yeah. check that out. That looks really funny. That. And um, um, there's going to be more and stuff coming up, and I guess you know you can follow me on Twitter. Bump it up to 10 followers if you want. Do it. Do it. But, um, Everyone better go do it right now. <laughs> if you haven't seen Dope and Grand Budapest Hotel, check them out. Dude, check them out. Because Tony fantastic. is an incredible And talent. a movie lover. I love it. Fresh is it right? knows, his, knows his stuff, so welcome anytime. Man, welcome to the family, and thank you coming here. Thank you, Dan Merle me. on the couch, Merle Dan at Merle Dan on Twitter. And I will say, uh, so many people on Twitter reached out to a friend of the show, Mike Carlson, about the theme park round. They were sad he wasn't here, and Mike responded with his pitch for a theme park oh. MCU. Oh. Uh, he pitched a Hawkeye's family cabin hotel. That was his <laughs> pitch for. All right. for, for the Tarzan uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that agree. was his pitch. I would do was that. a resort that was themed around Hawkeye's family cabin. <laughs> so his pregnant wife is <laughs> refinishing exactly. floors. Around. Exactly. Yeah. They just hire kids to run around the around. Yeah. HGTV well, presents the Hawkeye. Disney, Disney exactly. kids. They, they got the Captain contract. America out front chopping wood. Yep. So that was Mike Carlson's pitch <laughs> for everybody at home that was wondering. I what. think Mike gets the point. Yeah, Mike right. gets the point. Brett Pendleton, thank you for coming. Did you have fun today? I did. Anything well, you'd like to plug? Um, just the real word. It's a website I do um, articles of top tens for. Great. It's awesome. Awesome. Love it. The real Go word. Check it out. The real word. word. Yeah, Spelled real. real. Reviews, Get it like a movie. Real. Real. Are, you, are you visiting from Australia or are you now an, <laughs> an expatriate? Are you, do you live in LA now? No, no, I'm just visiting. Cool. Just for a few, uh, about a month in total. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. You got to come in. I'm glad you got to make it. Thank you for the support. So, All right. We'll be back with After the Fight next live on Plus if you're watching uh, or you can watch it on Plus later. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We will see you next week. Bye bye. Oh, and the belt is coming. Don't worry. We know Dan. Dan? Oh. Dan, don't call Dan out. Call me out, and it's coming big. We're planning something fun, so stay tuned. <laughs> it's it's going to be a good time. Yes. Bye! <laughs>
Every podcast we put on YouTube comes with this kick-ass graphic, listing all the topics your favorite Screen Junkies podcasters are talking about. If you click the topics, you can skip around and choose your own podcast battle royale. Go ahead, try them all. If you haven't already, subscribe to Screen Junkies on YouTube to join us for future fights. Or if you prefer to listen on iTunes, click the logo to download an audio version. 